right, next up, the lifters. Uh, these are just the flat topped lifters. You can see your stand standard uh, Melling uh, flat topped lifters. Um, here's something that the old guys are gonna get mad at me about. You don't need to let your lifters soak in oil overnight or whatever uh, to get the air out of them or whatever they say. Uh, soaking them in oil, it actually doesn't really do anything other than coat the outside. Uh, if you prime the motor, that's gonna force the oil into the, past the um, check ball inside and it's gonna get oil inside the lifter to get the air out. Uh, I prime my motors when I'm all done uh, until, turn them over a little bit, prime them, until oil comes out of the push rod. And when oil comes out of the push rod at the rocker, that's, that tells you right there that all the air, you know, or most of the air I should say is pushed out of the lifter and uh, within a few seconds of starting up 100% of the air, if any air remaining, will be, will be removed. So putting them in oil actually does nothing. Uh, I know some old guys, like I said, are going to be mad that I say that, um, but it's, it's, it's true. So. There you go, so we're gonna start putting the lifters in. One thing that's really important with a with a, a flat tappet lifter is to make sure that everything goes in nice. Like, with a nice little coat of oil on the inside there, take your assembly oil, do all the bores up, get a nice coat of oil in there. You wanna make sure, so important with a flat tappet, that the lifter is free in the bore. Uh, you gotta also watch, and if you had your block machine, hopefully uh, you asked them to check that the lifter boards aren't worn out. But you also don't want any deposits in there or some, uh, after they clean it, any flash rust or anything like that to make the lifter tight in the board. Okay, so it should go in real nice, not be loose, but it should be a perfect fit. You should be able to spin that lifter. There should be like no resistance. Um, you might, once we put some grease on there, it might be a little bit different, but you should check all of these to make sure that they're not loose and that they're, there's no nothing that's going to hold that lifter from spinning. Because if that lifter doesn't spin when you fire this motor up, you're going to wipe your camshaft out. People don't realize uh, the importance of a lifter spinning. What on a flat type of cam? Uh, the reason that needs to spin is some people I think they just think of the lobe, my fist being the lobe, comes up and just lifts it. But it's actually so important. The, lit, the spinning motion is kind of like your bearing. There is some metal to metal contact, obviously with the cam lobe and the lifter, but that, that lifter needs to spin as the cam lobe goes by to prevent, prevent it from just mustering the lifter or taking out the cam lobe. So it, that, that spinning is, is critical, is super critical. Uh, and that's why a lot of the manufacturers recommend you have the valve covers off when you fire up a flat type of cam and break it in, and you, and you should mark your push rods and actually see them spinning with the, with the lifter. But, like I said, just go through each one, make sure they're clean. Uh, hopefully, when they machine your block, if it's a, if it's a fresh block that you, uh, you, you know, you didn't get any flash rust and you got it lubed up right away, because this, that little bit, there's such a tight fit that that little bit of rust in the bore can cause them to be too snug and not spin. Each one of these are looking really good. This is just a fresh nut, but this block has like no miles on it, uh, and it and it's it's in actually really good shape. But I've had them where um, they actually are tight going in, and you know if you're not careful and don't you don't check that, you're you're gonna have uh, you're gonna wear that flat type of cam out within minutes of firing it up. And I think that happens to a lot of people, and then a lot of people blame the cam manufacturers, blame the lifters, blame whatever, and uh, most of the time. I don't know honestly most of the time, but a good chance a good chance that that lifter wasn't spinning. So just go through and check that. Make sure you got a nice coat of lube on all those. And this one's looking really good. So there we go. Again, we already did the cam lobes, but we're gonna put a good amount of grease on the lifter as well. Right on the edge there. You can put a little on the outside. I usually use uh, just. Uh, Diesel engine oil, actually, uh, 1540 when I'm putting these together in my pump can here. And then you'll just go through like that and put each one of them in. Ooh.
one. So, here you go, and then I'll usually go around, I'll drop oil on top of each one for the push rod. So there you go guys, uh, cams in, timing chains on, and lifters are in. Uh, and this flat top it small block Chevy. So I don't usually build small block uh, Chevys with flat top cams, usually I go roller cams. But this one's just uh, really cheap, kind of freshen up. I'm actually putting a more mild cam than was in it for the guy. Um, but this is the best tips I can give you to keep that uh, flat top of cam alive. Like I said, lots of grease. Very important break in. Uh, when you break in the cam, follow the, the manufacturer's spec for that. Uh, keep the RPMs up, don't let them idle. Go through all that. Make sure you prime the motor. Um, make sure you run the, the ZD, ZDDP oil, either a diesel oil or an actual engine break in oil and additive. Super important, and not just for breaking, keep that good oil in all the time. Every oil change on your hot rod, keep that cam alive because the newer oils just don't. There's no flat topic cams anymore, so the new oils don't have those additives to keep the cams alive. So there it is. Next video coming up, we'll be checking push rod length. So please like and subscribe if you're interested in learning how to quickly check push rod length on your small block Chevy. Thanks, guys.